Hi folks, uh, good morning. My name is Brian Jones. I'm the curator here at the aquarium at the Dauphin Island Sea Lab. And today we're going to show you a really cool animal we have here on display. This is an alligator snapping turtle. And if the camera gets any closer, it might get broken. <laughs> These guys have a very strong... No, you can get closer. These guys uh, are a really interesting turtle that we have throughout the southeast. Um, many people are familiar with them. Um, they're the largest freshwater turtle in North America and the second heaviest freshwater turtle in the world. Um, this is still a juvenile. Uh, it looks like a really large turtle, but it is, it is a juvenile. And they can get about two and a half to three feet long as males. And I'm talking just the shell length. Yep, he's feisty. Just the shell length can be two and a half to three feet long uh, for males. The females are only about half that size, uh, but the males can grow up to about 200 pounds, which is huge for a freshwater turtle. They live most of their life in rivers and streams that empty into the Gulf of Mexico. So anywhere from Texas over to Florida and as far north as Illinois and Iowa. Um, they're not as common as they used to be, mainly because of habitat destruction and overfishing. Believe it or not, Campbell's Soup used to sell turtle soup in the grocery stores. You could buy a can of turtle soup back in the 60s and 70s, and most of them were made with the meat from the alligator snapping turtle. They can live upwards of 50 to 60 years, maybe a little longer in captivity. There are some, some neat stories about people finding these guys with uh, Civil War bullets embedded in their shells. Uh, I'm not sure if those are just really good fishing stories or if they're actually true. Uh, but the longest official lifespan of these guys is around 70 years. Uh, one really neat thing about them, and you can see it here, on the bottom of their mouth they have what looks like a little pink worm that's actually a little muscular protrusion on their tongue or on the, on the floor of their mouth, they can wiggle that to lure prey closer to their mouth. These guys do like to eat fish, and that's mainly what would go after that little worm. Uh, they're not very picky, though, about what they eat. They will eat crawfish, um, salamanders, frogs, other turtles. They do like fish, snakes. Um, and if they come up close to the water's edge, they will also eat uh, mammals like little rats or baby possums that come up to the water's edge. Um, believe it or not, they do also eat some vegetation. They eat acorns and they'll eat some aquatic plants too. So not too picky. Now when they're juveniles like this one, they do a lot more fishing. So they rely more on luring prey to their mouth. When they get bigger, they will just walk along the bottom of the river or lake and look for dead things on the bottom. They'll eat dead fish. Um, even a, like a deer might end up in, the, in a river and on the bottom. They'll munch on that. Not very picky. Charlotte asked, um, do they eat alligators? They would likely eat baby alligators, believe it or not. Yes. Um, one neat thing about them, uh, they are called alligator snapping turtles, and it's mainly because of these three ridges that go down their back. Uh, another close cousin of this turtle is called the common snapping turtle, and they don't have these three ridges. Uh, most of the people in our area, when they see a snapping turtle, it's a common snapping turtle. Uh, it's only folks that might... Uh, I better watch my fingers there. Folks that might spend a lot of time on the rivers, uh, trapping fish or running trot lines, they're much more likely to encounter the alligator snapping turtle. But if you see a snapping turtle along a roadside or in a ditch or in your pond, it's almost always going to be a common snapping turtle. They don't get nearly as large, uh, only about 35 pounds, um, and they don't have the ridges, the distinct ridges going down their back. They also, the common snapping turtle's eyes are mounted more on the top of their head or as you can see here, the alligator snapper, the eyes are way over on the side of the head. He's not too happy with this. If you, if you look closely, you can see right above that pink lure, there's a little hole that's lighter in color. 
that's actually the, the opening to their lungs. So that's how they breathe. And when they go underwater, they can close that to keep water from going in. But right now, he's doing some hissing and trying to scare us away. What are their predators? Predators of alligator snapping turtles. When they're adults, it's pretty much only humans. Um, there are still a few states in the southeast that allow harvest. Uh, most states, including Alabama, have restricted harvest on the alligator snapping turtle uh, because of their, um, their population decline. Um, as juveniles or eggs, many of them get eaten by um, raccoons digging up the nest, uh, fox, uh, other turtles, birds, um, even uh, a really big largemouth bass would probably eat a baby alligator snapping turtle because as babies they're only about two inches long. Um, Clint asks, where did the story that they won't release their bite till it <laughs> thunders come, come from? I'm not sure who originated that, but it's, it is a fun story. Um, I've heard it for years and years. Uh, for one, I'm not willing to test it. Uh, if you do, let us know. Get back in touch with us and tell us how that works. But yeah, that's, that's one of the stories is that if they bite you, they won't let go until it thunders. So I think that's just a, a way that grandparents and parents convince the kids not to mess with them. It's pretty effective. I never messed with them when I was young. There's also uh, a story that they can bite clean through a broom handle and unless it's a really termite eaten broom handle it's probably not the case they do have a really strong bite but it's not going to break the wood of a broom handle like that and How again big can they, get? they they can get quite large now i say that the males the shell length between my hands here can get two and a half to three feet long but their head extends a good bit beyond that and their tail is really long so their total length would be probably five feet um, and 200 pounds. Wow. Crawford, who's seven, asks, how can you tell their age? Uh, good question. There's a lot of difference in turtle size among the same age turtles. So in general, it's a very rough estimate. It's about one to two inches of growth per year for their shell. Um, you can also get really technical and count some rings on their on their turtle scoots, but those are hard to see because they're often so covered with algae. Um, but yeah, they, they, uh, they reach maturity at about age 11 to 13, so that's really old for most turtles. Um, and that's one reason their population is in decline, because it takes so long for them to grow up to be able to have babies of their own. Now when they do, uh, the female will lay eggs in the springtime and she'll crawl about 100 yards away from the water to find a nice high spot to lay her eggs. They want to lay their eggs, they dig a hole and lay the eggs in an area where it won't get flooded. Uh, as we know, there are a lot of springtime floods, so they try to find high ground to lay their, their eggs. And it's about 30 to 40 eggs in a nest, and it takes three to four months for those to hatch. And those babies, when they hatch, they crawl out, they're about two to three inches long. Do they eat their babies? They typically don't. Normally, um, when the mom lays the nest, she goes back and, and lives her life. She doesn't really protect them or guard them like, uh, like an alligator does. Uh, so they, they don't tend to target their babies, and the babies try to stay in areas where the parents won't be. Um, I don't think there's any real recognition of the parents for the babies, but they prefer fish over turtles because you know, they'd rather eat something that's softer than crunching through a hard shell. This is a pretty good indication. Pretty good demonstration here. Yeah, it's much larger mouth than a common snapping turtle. And you can see the hooked jaws really help them when they grab onto something, uh, especially a fish. It's almost impossible for that fish to get loose. And then how long can they live? You had mentioned that one. In captivity, they've been recorded to 70 years. Uh, it's probably a good bit less than that in the wild because they have so many, so many things up against them in the wild. Um, there's some stories that say uh, over 150 years, but we're not sure how valid those are. Are they protected in Alabama? They're definitely protected in Alabama. Uh, there's no allowable harvest for food or for pets, so it's a good idea. If you happen to see one of these out in the wild, just observe it. Um, if it happens to be crossing a road, just let it go on across, or if, if you feel you need to, you can help it across the road, um, but definitely don't take it home. They don't make very good pets and they get huge. So um, 
you need a really big tank to keep them in with really good filtration because they're messy eaters and they produce a lot of waste. So they're, they're kind of a challenge to keep happy and healthy. But we have a, a display tank that has really good filtration. And as he gets bigger, we'll be finding bigger homes for him. Um, let's see, we have a couple more questions uh, to wrap it up. Can it see different colors? Anna Claire, who's six, asks. That's a good question. I'm not sure about that, but I will find out and uh, follow us in the comment section and I'll get back to you on that. I imagine they do see colors. Um, could they bite a finger off? Especially a little finger. I think they probably could. It's, it's a very strong bite. It's not nearly as strong as a uh, shark bite, but it's, uh, I've, I've read that it's similar to a human bite. So as scary as that is to think about, we could probably generate that amount of force to make that kind of bite. And what's their habitat? Good question. These guys prefer flowing water. So rivers, uh, bayous that flow into rivers, streams. They don't really like ponds or lakes that much. Uh, they, they are in fresh water, so you won't find them along the coast in brackish water, um, but they do like large bodies of flowing water mainly. And do we know, Aria, Aria Seven wants to know, how long can they stay underwater? Ah, another good question. Um, they can stay underwater and hold their breath for 40 to 50 minutes. So imagine uh, watching your favorite TV show and holding your breath for the whole length of it. Don't do this at home, but just imagine that. These guys can hold their breath a long time. And it's another neat thing. They don't tend to climb out onto logs like most turtles do. These guys spend most of their life underwater. Uh, they do come to the surface to breathe, and their nostrils are way up on the tip of their snout. They use it like a snorkel. Um, the only time they really climb out of the water is in the springtime when the females lay their eggs. If you come near, will they run or attack? Most of the time they will crawl away into the water, um, but if they feel cornered, they will do this. They will protect themselves by showing you their big uh, sharp jaws and they might lunge at you. It's probably more to scare you away than to actually get you. It's like he's going to make a run for it. I think he's, so Brian, thank you so much. We have a couple other questions, but you'll jump in the comments with those. Absolutely. Um, Put him back where he needs to go. Poppy had one more question about who we have in the tank behind us. Ah, so the stars of that show are the soft shell turtles. And we have the slider and then I think a mud turtle, right? Yep. yep. All right, well, guys, we are going to say goodbye to Brian and our alligator snapping <laughs> turtle. Um, thank you for joining us. And Brian, if you want to wave us out. Thanks a lot, guys.